Well, I do hope you uh, enjoyed singing along to Heroes of Faith. I haven't played that that one for a while. For a while, I do hope you did the actions. Maybe you didn't. I don't know. But I, I do like that song because it reminds me of all the different amazing uh, heroes of faith. Those who are, of course, uh, within the Bible. Of course, there's plenty of heroes of faith that have come since then and are even alive today. But I do wonder. Who is your favourite uh, hero uh, of the Bible? For me, I have many, if I'm honest, but <laughs> I guess uh, some of my favourites are people like King David or people like uh, Peter and, and the Apostle Paul. I also uh, love Nehemiah, particularly what he did by rebuilding uh, all those walls. Such a, an inspirational uh, leader and perhaps one of the more scary characters uh, in the Old Testament is, of course, uh, Elijah. Uh, I do, I, I mean, what an amazing uh, man of God he was, but uh, quite frightening as well. But I'm sure you all have your own uh, heroes uh, of faith. But the question comes is, why uh, do we remember them? Well, because we remember them, because they were amazingly uh, godly and holy uh, people in the Old Testament. Not just men, of course, uh, women uh, as well. But we remember them for all kinds of reasons, yes, not just for the good things, but I guess we remain, mainly remember them for their, their godliness and their holiness and their desire uh, to serve God. Well, later on, Peter's going to uh, come and speak to us and he's going to be speaking on Psalm 1, which is all about the way of the righteous. Uh, and so he's going to be unpacking that. And that's the reason why I guess at the beginning we had heroes of faith because they were godly uh, and righteous people. And so Peter's going to unpack uh, what it means uh, to be a, a righteous uh, person. Uh, I'll leave uh, that to him. Anyway, it's good to have you here as always. Uh, we have a, a normal sort of kind of uh, pattern uh, that we follow normally for Sunday Live. Uh, and in a moment, we're going to have one of my favourites, which is at the heart of worship, which is when the music uh, fades. And then Abby's going to come and read uh, to us uh, Psalm 1. And then Peter uh, is going to unpack that and look at that for us. After that, another uh, piece of music will follow a hymn. Uh, and then I'm going to reappear and I'm not going to have lots of lovely pictures as we normally do in, in the background. Uh, I thought I'd just do the sort of bog standard, good old way of just standing and praying uh, and, and so on. So with that in mind, with prayer in mind, let's ask God's uh, blessing on our time. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you uh, for uh, bringing us here on Sunday Live. But we also thank you, Lord, for all those amazing heroes of faith in the Bible that we can learn so much uh, from. And so, Father God, we just pray that you might now come by your Holy Spirit and bless our time together now. Amen. We're going to go and sing now uh, one of my, my favourite uh, songs, which is at the heart of worship. It's really telling us that singing is not just about performance, but it's really just uh, about worshipping God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's, uh, let's sing this uh, together. simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required Search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you All about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing Jesus 
Today's reading is taken from Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields fruit in its season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Good morning, everyone. Psalm 1. I was on the gate at New Wine, which is a Christian family conference in 2019, working on the finance team and checking people in, especially the guest speakers and so forth. And one day a chap came in and I remember thinking two things about him. One, he was quite large. And secondly, he was absolutely charming and amazingly courteous. I gave him his visitor's badge and noticed his name, Shane Taylor. Later that evening, uh, myself and the family went to one of the venues, enjoyed the worship, and then the speaker came on and it was Shane himself. And he begins his talk like this. He says, I was in prison for two attempted murders. And whilst I was in prison, I organized a riot. And during that riot, I stabbed a prison guard, one of the officers. Very early on in his talk, he describes himself as having got in with the wrong crowd. As a youngster, Shane got into stealing cards and burglaries. He made sure he always carried a knife and he was not afraid to use it. If you search for Shane Taylor on YouTube, you can find his testimony um, on the Alpha course um, and it's really worth listening to. The full story is too long to tell here, but suffice to say that he was invited to something called Alpha in prison. He had no idea what it was, and his first reaction was, oh no, it's a Christian thing. But he went, and I think he kept going, initially because of the cake. And for those who don't know, Alpha is a course on the fundamentals of Christianity. It's to help us find purpose and life and meaning and to understand what the Christian faith offers. 
And one day they came to the that section of the course that looks at the work of the Holy Spirit, where they pray for all the attendees. And the pastor leading the course shared some scriptures with Shane, including one that said, there is no one righteous, not even one. That's from Romans chapter three. And eventually Shane prayed, Lord, if you're real, come into my life. I hate who I am. He then goes on to say at first he felt absolutely nothing, but then he felt this energy, this warmth just bubbling up from inside him until he found himself sobbing like a baby. It changed my whole life, he said. Shane is now married. He has four children. He leads Alpha in prisons. And the interesting thing is that uh, the first prison that asked for him was the prison at which he'd injured the officer during the riot. He'd stabbed the officer. And uh, it was an amazing God-filled turnaround. He changed the people he allowed to influence him. Psalm 1, which we've heard, begins, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners. And Shade began his talk with, I got in with the wrong crowd. And the psalm is saying, really, don't get in with the wrong crowd. Be careful where your influences come from. The Psalms are poetry which express the whole range of human emotion, feeling and experience, often referred to the hymn book or the prayer book of the Old Testament. We find in the Psalms depression, we find exuberant joy and everything in between. There's a great reality to the Psalms which helps us to admit and face the truth that life can be tough. And Psalm 1 presents us with a stark choice. Which way are we going to go? Are we going to go the way of what the Psalm calls the righteous or the unrighteous stroke, the wicked? Those who take no account of God. And verse, verse 4 tells us if we do, we're like chaff blown away by the wind. Psalm 1 is really speaking about the habits we get into. Who do we listen to? Who do we mix with? Who do we allow to set the standards by which we live? And I wonder if you noticed that as that song was read, it began with blessed is he who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, stand in the way of sinners, or sit with mockers. Walk, stand, sit, almost embracing the whole of life. In other words, where are the influences in our life coming from? Now we can probably all remember times we've allowed ourselves to be influenced unhelpfully by other people. And if we think about it, it's how advertising work. It wants to influence us. It wants to tell us that we're missing out, that by having that car or wearing that fashion or having these products in our home, our life will be better and happier and richer. That's what advertising is trying to do. It's trying to tell us there is more. You haven't got it. You need it. And when you have got it, you'll be happier. And yet, fortunately for us, Psalm 1 tells us right at the beginning where true happiness is to be found. It is the law of the Lord in verse 2. In other words, the Word of God. Poetically, the palm sa psalm says that it, we're like fruitful trees planted by the water's edge, being watered, being fed, being fruitful, if we hold on to, study and meditate the Word of God. So the psalmist is suggesting a different lifestyle. First he's saying, delight in the Word of God. Delight in God's Word. I wonder whether we delight in our Bibles. I remember um, on the ordination retreat, uh, before I was ordained in Winchester Cathedral, our retreat was taken by Colin James, Bishop Colin James. And he said, God writes to you every day. Read your mail. 
God writes to you every day through his living word, through the Bible. Read your mail. The psalmist said, delight in the word of God. Think how excited we get about letters, emails, communications from those we love and those we care for. Well, God loves us and he writes every day. And secondly, it said meditate on the word of God day and night. And that's reminding us, isn't it, that we're not just to read it and then close the Bible and that's it for the day. We're to kind of carry that phrase, that word that caught our minds as we read, carry it through the day, contemplate it, chew on it, mull it over and uh, continue to allow that word of God to work in you. So the psalmist says, delight in the word of God, meditate on the word of God, and thirdly, produce fruit as a result of allowing God's word to soak into us, to inform our life choices and our behavior. We can be people who make a difference. You probably know there are people called influencers on social media, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all those different options that we have these days. Influencers. They get manufacturers, they get fashion designers, hoteliers and restaurants to give them products, merchandise for free. And they try and persuade the companies that we've got thousands of followers and if, if we praise you up in our social media, you'll get lots more custom. So let us have it for free. Influencers, influencers, people who look to them as styles of icon and fashion. Thousands follow them. They are influenced. But do you know, we can be influencers too. We can be influencers by enjoying the Word of God. It starts in our hearts. And if we find it hard, why not pray, just ask God to touch our hearts so we fall back in love with His Word? Maybe we did once, but it's kind of left us. Or when we open our Bibles, why don't we say, Father God, by your Spirit, just bring this alive to me again. Fill me with that same passion for your Word. And let's start meditating on God's Word, chewing it over in our minds, letting it sink into our hearts. And let's ask God then to make our lives fruitful. And we can do that, you know, in, in very small ways. We can reach out to others with acts of grace and kindness. We can be the first to ask for forgiveness. We can be the first to forgive others. Or we can be ready when moments arise to be able to speak about the hope that we have in Jesus. Shane's life was transformed because he stopped running with the wrong crowd and he turned to God's word. He changed where his influence came from. He turned to Jesus. And in a world that, that screams at us, crowds in on us, and says from so many angles, here's the key to happiness, here's the key to happiness. I pray we can follow Shane and find transformation in our life totally fulfilled in God's word. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your living word, that word which you tell us is living and active. And Father, we acknowledge that sometimes it falls to the background of our lives as the pressures of life get to us, as other things seem more attractive. And I just ask, Father, by your spirit, bring alive in us again a real passion and a love for your word. And Lord, help us to set aside other influences Lord because we long to be influencers for you so father come fill us with that passion for your living word we ask in Jesus name amen to burst when you hear that quiet whisper and
the fire begins to burn When you know deep down inside you There is something you must do Let the Holy Spirit make His home in you Let Him reign Let Him reign now Let the Holy Spirit make His home in you When you're walking through the darkness and the mountain seems too high When the ocean waves surround you And the flame begins to die When you face those times of trouble But you know His love is true Let the Holy Spirit make His home in you Let Him rest I am treasured He delights in what He sees Holy Spirit will you make your home in me Let Him reign Let Him reign now Let the Holy Spirit make His home in you Well, thank you uh, ever so much, uh, Peter, uh, for uh, that lovely uh, word that you gave to us uh, today. We're then going to come to a time of prayer, uh, so let's uh, pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your love for each one of us gathered here today. We thank you that you are passionate about each of us. But most of all, Lord, we just thank you for your love for us, that you're always there with us. We also stand in awe and wonder, or maybe we should bow in awe and wonder at your creation. Because when we look around our world today, we just see such a beautiful world. And when we look out beyond our planet into the stars, we see the vastness of all your creation. Oh God, the world says it all became, uh, it all came about ra by random chance. But Lord God, we know that your hand was behind all creation for there is a purpose and there is an order to it all and so father god we just thank you uh, for your love but for your amazing ability to sustain all that we know and love amen but lord when we uh, come and look into our world our hearts are saddened but today there is so much conflict still going on throughout the world. People trying to get into positions of power and authority, whether it be in companies or whether they be leaders of nations. And with that in mind, Lord, we do particularly uh, pray for the Middle East uh, and Israel and what is going on uh, in that part of the world. Oh Lord, they are at war, the Palestinians uh, and the Israelis are at war with each other again, or certainly in conflict we do pray uh, lord that peace might come into that land and we pray lord as those who seek to broker peace that you will guide them as they try to bring these two parties uh, together well, lord our hearts are saddened when we watch the news and see the death of children and innocent people and so father god we pray that this conflict might come to a conclusion quickly we also pray, Lord, for our own uh, nation. And oh, Lord God, it's so wonderful to feel that light is beginning uh, to return to some kind of normality. But yet, Lord, in the last few days, we've heard the news that this Indian variant 
uh, has begun to take hold here in parts of England. We thank you Lord for the quick response to this and the fact that people have realised uh, that uh, this is the, is the case and it's happening. And so Father God, we just pray uh, for our government and those uh, in those local authorities that they will get on top of this really, really quickly. Uh, and so uh, that uh, it will be uh, got under control. We do thank you, Lord, though, uh, that the news is coming out, that our vaccines are effective against it. And so, Lord, we just pray for this uh, mass vaccination program, that it will happen quickly. Uh, and so, Lord, that there will not be anybody hospitalised or, or will die from this new strain uh, of COVID. And so, Father God, we just pray, therefore, that as we slowly begin to progress out of this, God, that life will return and that people will be able to be with one another again uh, like we used to, so that we can come and sing uh, and worship you. We also pray, Lord, for those perhaps who are facing unemployment and those who perhaps will now find a struggle as life returns, because, Father God, we turn on the news and we hear about like Debenhams and other companies that are closing down just because uh, of COVID and the influence it's had uh, upon their business. And so, Lord, we just pray for those who will be directly affected by this, that they might be able themselves to find employment quickly. Amen. And now, Father God, we bring before you all those who are known to us, our loved ones, our friends, those who are unwell at this time. We just offer them to you now, God, and pray that you uh, will bring healing into their lives. Lord, we do pray that if they're in hospital or they're being cared for at home, that those who are trained med uh, medically and doctors, that you will guide them and give them the great wisdom that they need to help these people who are known to us to get better. We do thank you, Lord, therefore, for all those who seek to care for these people. Amen. And so, gracious Father, we just bring all these prayers to you, in, and we're knowing that you have heard us. And we just pray, God, that you will answer our prayers this day. I ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. We're now going to have our next uh, song, uh, and I will uh, reappear afterwards. Uh, and uh, so we're going to enjoy our next uh, song, which I would tell you, but I have it all up on the computer screen and the computer screen has decided uh, to disappear. I think it's Hosanna, praise is rising. Hey, technology, I don't know. Anyway, let's uh, enjoy our final song together.
Well, our time has uh, come to a, a conclusion. I do hope you've enjoyed uh, Sunday Live. And again, thank you uh, very much uh, to, to Peter uh, for uh, doing our talk uh, today. Remember to share, like, uh, and make your comments as you always uh, do about Sunday Live. And you may have noticed a Celtic cross uh, behind me. Uh, it's actually Le Leanne actually made that. She did it with it, the uh, stitchy thing. I can't remember what it was called now. Uh, cross stitching, that's it, remembered now. Uh, but Liam did it ages ago and I just thought I'd put it up behind me because it's really a, a lovely uh, cross. We well, normally have it somewhere else. Liam came into this into my little studio and said, what, what is that up there? I said, don't ask. <laughs> anyway, I want to wish you all well. I hope you all have a, a, a lovely uh, weekend. And next Sunday, of course, we're going to be celebrating uh, Pentecost. So hopefully a lot of colour, a lot of red uh, will appear on Sunday live. So that's uh, something uh, to look forward to uh, for next uh, Sunday. I guess it's the church's birthday uh, as I class it. So um, so uh, that's definitely something to look forward to. So, so may God's love and God's blessing be upon every single one of you. May you seek to serve him uh, and be righteous in all your ways. I ask this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, God bless. Have a great week. Until next time. Amen. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you. Whoa, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. Sure.